just like a tree standing by the water. We shall not be moved. <laughs> We're at the uh, First Circuit Court. Um, at the sentencing hearing of uh, Blade and Sugar. Execution of sentence actually is uh, in December. They might be able to get bailed out. Bail was raised to eleven thousand dollars. I gotta ask you a question off camera. <laughs> okay, I might be going off. I can put it on mute. Okay. Hang on. We are at uh, really sitting down the process and, and, and for that now he's been sentenced to 45 days. So I am a little disappointed in the sentence. And the steps forward. The steps forward from now is that uh, I'll be meeting with my client uh, over the next few days and we're going to prepare a notice of appeal for the case. And we are prepared to appeal the matter as far as we need to in order to resolve it. Thank you. Thank you. We're at the uh, First Circuit Court. Where it was the uh, sentencing hearing for uh, Blade, Walsh, and Sugar. The sent uh, Sugar was sentenced to 60 days jail, uh, Blade, 45 days. Um, Bail was set at eleven thousand uh, dollars, but if they can make bail, uh, we've heard that uh, both uh, attorneys, public defenders, will file appeals. So. This is. I think there'll be an interview of, uh, <coughs> Yeah, you're going to need it. Here's, uh, <laughs> the Angela McIntyre. Okay. Right there. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah.
Well, ultimately, I'm disturbed because of you can char you can get the the charge of obstructing government operations, even if what the government is doing is to be found unlawful. And so, at the end of the day, it just it, it scares me because. Um, we basically have no defense against a government that can go rogue whenever it sees fit. I, I am disappointed, but I, I'm more scared than anything yeah, at this point. I've, I was always taught that people should be afraid of, people should not be afraid of the governments. Governments should be afraid of the people. My first name is D'Angelo McIntyre. That's D apostrophe A N G C L O. McIntyre is M C I N T Y R E. Thank you. Thank you. I'm streaming live. Anybody want to say? You know, um, can can we request from Hawaii Gorilla Video? Can we request her closing statement? Um, the, the, the footage from that? Yeah, I would actually like Because we have a show like that we would like to use that one. Because it's supposed to be any pool, media. Right. We can put the mic on the judge. I don't know, this mic might pick up. Well, whatever, whatever it did pick yeah. up. We, we, we yeah. want to request yeah. that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Can you call Brooks Bear at 535-0440? Uh, okay. Yes. Wait, I like this guy's close. Brooks Bear. Yes. So how do you spell bear? Bear. Uh, B-A-E-R. 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 Okay. And Brooks. Brooks. B-R-O. Okay. okay. And the number? 535 mm -hmm. 044 Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, if you if you can, though, uh, don't let it yeah. get lost in the cataloging because yeah, sure. cool. we will be trying to get that. Sorry, we got cut off because somebody called. Let me uh, get up here. I'll, we'll piggyback on KITV's interview. It's just a little bit more to me. Camera on your desk. And I am broke. Can you spell your first and last name for me? Oh. Sure, first name is Iokona, I O K O N A, and last name Baker, B A K E. And how do you feel uh, about the second thing that was given? I guess the first thing to start with is that we definitely plan on appealing. Yeah. Um, maybe. I think there's a lot of issues, solid, significant issues from the beginning throughout to the end of the trial that are, I think, good appeal issues. So that's the first thing to clarify. Second thing is certainly disappointed with the sentencing. Uh, 60 days for essentially a peaceful protest. You know, someone exercising a right to free speech uh, for her saying, you cannot steal from the houseless population of this island any longer. Uh, 60 days is a lot. She doesn't have a prior criminal record here. Uh, I think it's too much. Uh, so certainly a disappointment in that. And I also think, you know, lots of concerns with regard to bail. It's set at 11,000 right now. For someone who's houseless, might as well be 11 million. It's just, it's something that seems impossible for her to post in her situation. So, for all those reasons, disappointed, um, but also looking forward to the appeal and uh, getting that together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blade, what was his sentencing? So, Blade was sentenced to a term of incarceration of 45 days with credit for time served, although he did not have any credit uh, for time because he wasn't arrested for the matter. He was served with court papers and caused to come to court for that. Uh, his bail was also set at $11,000. He was not out on bail previously. He was out on personal recognizance and had made all of his court appearances. So we were a little disappointed, not only in the sentence, but also in the fact that the bail was set and that it was set so high. So uh, I heard you uh, say that um, yes, the, the state cannot appeal this case if it, before the, the verdict came in. The state could not appeal if it went against them, but the defendants could against them. And then you said <laughs> that it's the only fair thing about this trial. Um, what were some of the limitations that were placed on you to make you think that this, both of you have said that it's not been a fair trial? Some of the limitations that we were placed with, um, a, a little bit due to the 
the confines of what happens in a criminal trial. Uh, the court instructed the jury several times that they're not to consider any constitutional uh, or free speech issues. Those are issues that we brought up via pretrial motion and that we have preserved in our minds for an appeal, uh, but that weren't necessarily within the scope of what this court wanted to have the trial be about. So we preserve them, and I think we'll be able to raise them. I hope we'll be able to raise them successfully. And, and are those fundamental constitutional issues not being able to raise, be, be raised, do you think that was um, uh, condemned them right from the get-go? Well, it was definitely an uphill battle. It was definitely an uphill battle, and we're hoping at this point that the appeals court or the Supreme Court or the United States Supreme Court uh, will agree with us, and we'll, I think we'll take it up as far as it needs to go. Uh, I'm curious as to why uh, the, uh, the defense, sorry, the state was able to introduce multiple witnesses and video and evidence, but both your teams didn't have any witnesses, and I don't know if you were able to submit evidence of video or other. Well, I guess my response to that is that really what the state supplied was a six-minute videotape, which I think was a very short version of what happened. I think part of our case is also showing that this this issue and her actions on that day, when I say her, I mean Sugar, Sugar's actions on that day aren't a result or aren't purely contained in that six minutes. This date back months, over a year ago, you know, to the repeated uh, showing up by the city and county and them acting outside of the, you know, their powers as per the, the regulation, the ordinance. You know, if, if your history and experience is that the state comes and they don't follow the law and they take and destroy your valuables, uh, that's an important context coming to what her mindset was on this day. And I think uh, that in large part didn't get to come out in some of the restrictions. Just, just why weren't you able to, was it your decision not, not to introduce witnesses or how did that happen? Well, part, I don't want to get so much into that part because we are going to be appealing and uh, some of those issues, you know, we'll have to go back and discuss, you know, so I want to do those before I go. go. Is there any chance of an early release? Is that an animal with If they post bail. And at this point, $11,000 bail, like I said, is a huge obstacle for someone who's houseless. And you were satisfied with, uh, it seemed like you were very satisfied at certain points during the trial that things were going well. It seemed like they, uh, apart, uh, apart from the, the limitations that were set earlier, after that point, uh, do you think the trial went as well as it would be? Well, I'm never satisfied or feel like a trial is going well. You know, I've been through the feeling that goes along with that sometimes, and, and it doesn't turn out how you expect it to. You know, anytime uh, a client of mine, and I'll speak specifically at this point about sugar, you know, I, I her liberty is in my hands. You know, telling her story is in my hands. You know, there's a lot of obligations that I have and duties that I have to try and, and do the best legal job and the best job of telling her story. And so I never I never let myself get confident that things are going my way. I never want to trick myself into believing that things are going my way. I just try and do the best job I can, both with the law and telling her story, and uh, you know, leave it up to the fact finders. Do you want to make a statement? I don't have anything else that I feel like I want to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are the attorneys. Uh